I bid you all good morning, good evening, and good night to wherever you're watching this transmission. Welcome to the Starving Summer, or the Summer of Starving, or which way actually has a better ring to it. Anyways, Mike Martin's here. Welcome, and let's get into what is going on and how it's going to affect you at your doorstep and how it's going to affect pretty much everyone on this planet and how we're getting affected with these new, um, so to say, changes that they are throwing at us or new regulations they are they are acknowledging towards us or whatever they have planned for us all right guys don't forget to check us out on odyssey every saturday night we moved mike in the night about a year and a half ago over to odyssey because we could no longer speak here on this on the main platform so every Saturday night, we are live with Mike in the Night. And this last Saturday, we had Simon from The Uneducated Economist come on the show for an hour and a half and make, uh, you know, very in-depth, deep discussion and uh, unplugged discussion with Simon uh, from The Uneducated Economist. So if you guys don't mind checking out the episode 448 of Mike in the Night on Odyssey, and that's what the channel looks like. All right, let's move on. So what is going on? Well, lots is going on. Toronto Food Banks. So the, the summer is starving. Toronto Food Bank just saw a record number of visits in June. Toronto's largest food bank is sounding the alarm after a record number of visits last month. According to the Daily Bread Food Bank, there were 171,000 clients visiting visits to the food bank in the month of June and close to 8,000 new clients accessed their services. Prior to the you know what, food banks were seeing about 60,000 clients visits per month. Now, I'm going to beg to differ on this because we were already reporting this in 2019 before the you know what and we're starting to see it happen again before the you know what, right? So in our uh, 30 plus years of serving the city of Toronto, Daily Bread has never served as many individuals as we did in past June. CEO Neil uh, told CTV News of Toronto. <clears throat> so this is a good one. Watch what he says here. This guy must watch this channel or have seen something we posted because I even have titles of what he says in specific videos that I made. Watch this. Take a look at this. The problem is systematic and it deals with a lack of affordable housing, a lack of income, security, and incomes that are simply not keeping place with inflation. Thank you very, very much. All right, let's move on here. <coughs> Got a cough here, guys. Sorry. Long lines are back at U.S. food banks as inflation hits high. Who remembers this? Remember this in California? Remember this in Los Angeles? Do you remember this? These lineups back in 2019? Long lines are back at out, uh, at outside food banks around the U.S. So these are outside food banks around the U.S. Working Americans overwhelmed by inflation increasingly seek handouts to feed their families. So I can show you images of where we're covering this in 2019 with these outdoor food banks or drive through food banks. So there it is. Um, dozens of vehicles line up to get food boxes at St. Mary's Food Bank. Phoenix long lines are back at food banks around the U.S. as working Americans overwhelmed by inflation uh, turn to handouts to help feed their families. With gas prices soaring along with grocery costs, many people are seeking charitable food for the first time and more and uh, uh, more and more are arriving on foot. There it is out of the United States. So this is where I got tonight's topic from. The hungriest summer, food banks say food insecurity is rising again. Uh, food is getting more expensive. Groceries overall cost 12% more now than they did a year ago. And some some staples are up way more than that. The price of chicken is about 20% higher and the price of eggs is more than 30%. So they wanted us to eat bugs and live in pods and be happy, right? When the you-know-what hit, uh, the summer of people are going to feed feeding South Florida's food bank more than doubled from 700,000 to more than 1.5 million. And that's a state in the time at that time where housing was severely affordable in comparison to people living in New York, California, all of Canada, all of Australia, all of New Zealand, all of the UK. So that people, you know, see wages need to be in line for real estate for people to afford to buy food. 
Uh, so here we go. Food banks struggle with supply amid increased demand, inflated costs. Food pantries across the region nature, nationwide are experiencing an uptick in need and a shortage of resources. Uh, Executive of Center Lay Ministries in Jeffersonville, Indiana. The nonprofit runs a food pantry for families as well as an addiction recovery program for women. Brown said more people are experiencing food insecurity as she that she's ever seen before. So there it is right there. And opinion. So the, we're in this because why middle class lifestyle remains out of reach for so many. So people trying to get into the middle class lifestyle are completely out of reach. Read this from the New York Times. It does hint on a few truths. Most of it is just whatever, but it's not a bad affordability crisis makes sense. Uh, makes some sense of the last few decades of our economic debates, a crisis, a crisis of housing debt. So there it is. It's housing. It all ties back to housing and inflation climbing even higher in June amid reopening effect. Economists predict, and this is out of Canada. Economists are predicting an even higher reading of inflation for June as energy and food prices crept higher and economy reopened further. So they're reopening the economy, so to say, because they say they should and they say that it's time to reopen the economy because they say so, right? But are we going to see more protesting now that, you know, we're seeing it in Europe, we're seeing it all over the world. Uh, are we going to start to see more protesting or... or so are they going to – something going to happen where they're going to have to shut everything down because people start to protest? we got the midterm elections in the state in November, uh, down in the states in November. That's going to be a problem. They might find some variant or something. Who knows? Stats Canada will re- release information data for June on Wednesday, a week after Bank of Canada raised its key interest rates uh, by a full percentage point. So inflation could go a little over 8% as early next week. So I did a rate – Uh, a rate revelation video about a few months back, what interest rates need to be in Canada, United States, uh, Australia, New Zealand, each country, and kind of tackling each of the issues that they're dealing with there and kind of conforming or discussing what interest rates need to be in certain parts of the world. Uh, Summer airfare shows signs of peaking on inflation pressure. UK profit warnings soar as inflation risks more debt distress. The retail industry is facing a potential wave of bankruptcies. Bankruptcies. Here's why. So more and more Revlon. Revlon filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, making it the first household consumer facing. Consumer facing. You get it? Consumer facing. It's makeup. Name to do so in months. So there it is right there. And Revlon is looking to they file for Chapter 11. So here's the announced retail bankruptcies. So you started to see the buildup already towards the you-know-what. And then they just shut everything down. And there's 2020, there's 2021. And then, you know, once you get hit this hard, it starts to trickle down. And it's going to get worse. Now they're now the mom and pops have suffered. They're going to come for the big corporate, bigger corporations. Increased foreclosure activity in the first six months of 2020 approaches uh, pre-you-know-what levels. So there it is right there. You could read that by that's uh, Sison PR Newswire. So, and let's go into what we're talking about. Again, we talked about this. We talked about it many times. This is the video. Sorry, I'm getting messages here on my phone. Um, this is the video that I made of uh, rate revelation, shocking rate revelation, what interest rates need to be to help curb inflation two months ago. No one saw the video, so it's there if you want to see it. And wages not keeping up with inflation goes back. uh, Sorry, wages not keeping up with inflation, housing out of reach. And you go back to this guy's article, this gentleman here from the food bank says the problem is systematic and it deals with a lack of affordable housing, a lack of income security and incomes that are not simply keeping in pace with inflation. So they say it more professionally than I did uh, back in the day. But there it is right there. We've been talking about inflation, the taste of inflation. We've been talking about inflation for a long time. A long time here. There's the great Canadian peso that's coming. That we've been talking about. Uh, look at this <coughs> from three years ago. <clears throat> Interest rates are headed to 9% by 2022. So there it is. The truth of inflation, food costs four years ago. 
Uh, Canadians say it's getting harder for their family to afford food. Inflation prices hidden three years ago. So it, it just keeps going. Look, 22 bucks for a ba- for bacon in New Zealand, 22 bucks seven months ago. Food rights and, uh, you know, food rights there in um, Sri Lanka. So what's going on here? So this is what we talked about here. Uh, banks are now referring people to food banks so they don't default on their mortgages in Australia. Middle class can't afford food. Food bank noticed increase of working poor and tra- uh, working poor uh, transportation issues. So let's go back here and see what we talked about on that video on before the you know what, December 26, 2019. What were we talking about? Here it is. Millions for food banks during holidays in 2019. Why? Because millions of people didn't have food for the holidays. <coughs> Let's keep going. Food banks in Ontario, working class joining the line. So there's, uh, there have been people and new accounts or new people joining the um, as they get pushed out of the middle class, right? What's this one here? Uh, same article. Let's keep going. Let's keep going until we find the next article. Same one. I guess I went in depth in that article because it was really good. What does this graph say here? Hold on. There's a graph here. Let's see what that says. There it is. So figure one, re- uh, reason for visit, benefit, social assistance, uh, low wages, uh, uh, unexpected expense comes up, unemployed, sickness, medical leave, homelessness, debt, uh, unexpected housing expense, benefit, uh, social assistance delays, or family breakup. So those are the uh, main main reasons there. What does this one say? Ontarians with full full, full and part-time jobs increasingly using food banks as report. And it goes into, let's see what else we got here. What were we talking about back then? Uh, helping hand food bank notice increase of working poor users in Bradford. I think that's in Bradford, Ontario, Canada. Uh, this one here, I think this is another one here. Let's see what this one says here. Food insecurity feeds needs for food banks back okay this is all from 2019 folks so this is before the you know what so we were seeing this ramp up so when they're going to blame the you know what on everything it's not the you know what the rise of working poor puts pressure on avon food banks again and it just keeps going on and on canadian uh, economy posts biggest monthly job loss since financial crisis again again we were losing jobs back in 2019 before the you know what so it's not the you know what that did it's it's before the you know what so let's go into here what's this one here we went to that one already so there it is right there i'm wearing glasses now so that means the video is starting to wrap up i wanted to throw this out there because right now it's going to be the summer of starvation and hunger for a lot of people a lot of people watching this are like you know what i'm okay i got the money i get uh uh, I understand what's going on. I, I get it, and 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 I'm <clears throat> I'm prepared. The one thing I could do and say to you guys the most, and I had Alaska. I was talking to Alaska Prepper yesterday. Uh, Alaska Prepper called me. Uh, if you haven't checked this channel out, check it out. Alaska Prepper. You could find it on the bottom of my YouTube channel. You could find Alaska Prepper here. You go to my YouTube channel, and you go to the bottom. There's Alaska Prepper right there, and there's God Rules from Tony. And then Uneducated Economist, you could find us all on here on the bottom of my main channel. So here, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom that in for you guys. That's what it looks like right there. And I've had this up for a long time. So anyways, guys, one thing that I could say in Alaska Prepper said is basically prepare. Just be prepared. There's nothing more on a grand scale that we could do. Like, we could try. I mean, we could go out and protest. We could make signs. We could write letters to our members of parliament. There's, you know, we could educate our families on what to do during a crisis. It, it, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do collectively. But when it comes to the household and protecting the family, make sure you're prepared. You know, I'm putting up another 16 solar panels today at my house. I'm, I know, you know, some people argue with me that solar isn't that great. But on an individual use, not on a global use or a provincial use or a state use or a county use i'm talking about independent solar for independent households work okay work i've been using solar for now four years it works okay uh independently not oh look at all these solar plants that were built and these solar generation systems that were supposed to make so much and it's all shut down and it's not even new no at a home level it works fine I'm going to give you guys an update on the solar system after it's fully installed 
and ready to go here at the house. Anyways, be prepared. It doesn't hurt to be prepared. I'll, I'm gonna get. It, I'm gonna work. I'm working on getting a Alaska prepper. Said he'll have a Skype on. We'll have him on mic in the night uh, to talk preparedness. Uh, it would be episode four hundred. What episode? Four hundred and forty nine. We'll have him on mic in the night, and then the week after, we'll see if we can get God Rules Tony back on to talk uh, his angle on things. But this week, uh, last Saturday was Simon and economic woes. And the, this week, it's going to be uh, Alaska Prepper with preparation. And the next week, we'll get God Rules on to see what he says about what or what he has to say about what. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, being part of the channel. And prepare, 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 prepare. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I always read your comments. And I'll see you guys on the flip side. Mike Martin's here. I have spoken.